Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who have been following us for a while, you know that we got a pretty good drought going on up here in northern Idaho and we're trying to keep all of our plants watered and it's been somewhat of a little bit of a challenge, but we are getting it going. You can see behind me that all the plants are starting to get established. We got some irises starting to flower. We have some other ground cover that's starting to flower and then a few trees in there, lots of little berry bushes mixed throughout. And everything is still holding on. It's not too dry yet, so we're doing good with that. We've been trying to water it, but we got some other plants down here in the hoop house. We got a couple sunflowers and some other mixture of flowers that we need to get out of the hoop house because it is actually getting too hot in there. And then this week, it's already predicted to be about 90 degrees, so it's already super hot here, guys. This is super abnormal. It's not normally like this, but we're gonna run with it because it's what we got coming. We have to get these plants out of the hoop house. There's the sunflowers in there. They're starting to get too hot. With it being like 90 degrees outside, it's gonna be really hot inside that hoop house. So we're gonna try to till up just a little garden right next to it to get these plants out of the hoop house in an attempt to save them as well. All right guys, so down here at the bottom, this is the hoop house. We haven't made a ton of videos on it, but we do have a few sunflowers going in here. These are these tall ones. Not totally positive what these shorter ones are as well as these and these, but all the tall ones should be sunflowers. We did have some decorative grass going, and these guys, there's some over here. Really hard to see, it's still really young. That's holding on, it seems like that's doing okay. These were flowers, but it's just been so hot in here that it took a toll on them, but we're gonna get them out of here. And I think my plan is to try to till up a spot just right in this area right here. All our stuff is kind of temporary for now and this just kind of makes sense. We're not gonna have a ton of plants in here. All of these are gonna end up getting cut down for the wedding. So I think this spot right in here should be pretty good. All right guys, it's so hot that it shut the phone off, but this is what we got. Everything is planted in here. We got the sprinkler on it. This right hand side, you can see we got sunflowers. Then right in the middle there, oh, right there we got more flowers, not sure what kind. And then I did some grass way in the back over here. And that still gives us room for a few more tomatoes. Should be good. Now Jed and I are chilling here in the woodshed. Can you see me, Jed? Barely. It is hot. It's a freaking scorcher out there. Not used to this yet. It's probably 90 degrees right now. I bet you it's at least 85 degrees out. Really hot, so we're taking a little break in the shade, make sure that this sprinkler is gonna do its thing. Still wanna work on this well, we are using the second well, so we're cleaning that out at the same time as watering our plant, so it's kind of a win-win, but I just wanna make sure it's gonna cycle if it does shut off. All right guys, so this is pretty interesting. A lot of you guys know that we don't have a really good water situation, but the second well produces a lot more water, but still not a ton. We were still able to run the well dry with just a garden hose hooked up to it. And I was able to do that. And I was able to run the well dry all the way out to having about 300 feet of garden ho hose hooked to it. But any more than that, there was enough resistance and back pressure against the pump 
to where we couldn't quite run the well dry. So that's what we did. We would put about 350 feet on this with the sprinkler on the end and we could not run the well dry off of that. And we've been running it for about three days now and it's been working out really good. I brought the sprinkler down here to work on this little garden that we just put in and I disconnected about 300 feet of hose and have about 75 feet of hose hooked up here and we can't run this dry. This thing has not cycled yet and that's a really good thing. That means we're actually opening up some water pockets down, you know, however far down, it's 55 feet down underneath the ground over there. There is still a little bit of grit in this water. It's still a little sandy. So we're trying to flush all that out, but so far it's going super smooth and that is just awesome guys. That means we might eventually have a good water situation. Probably gonna have to do a little bit of extra filtering, but I am just okay with that. I will be just fine with it if we have a lot of water. All right, I wanted to show you guys how we're switching these pumps on and off here. As you can see, we have the first well right here with our power, and that is actually our septic storage tank. So like I said, this is the first well here with the power coming from the house. And over this way is the second well tucked back way over in there. And that is what's running that sprinkler over there. And we just have this orange line coming all the way into the plug. But we need to switch this because this pump will only turn on when the pressure switch up at the house turns on. So I need to come down here, switch the plugs, go up to the house, drain the pressure, get the pressure switch to turn on to tell power to come to the pump. It sends power to the pump, but it's not the right pump. It's the second well. So we're watering with the second well. So that's kind of how that works. I've never switched this live. It shouldn't be too bad. So hopefully we'll see. What are you doing in there? So the main reason I wanted to weed whack this little strip, I guess there were two. I wanted to make it look just a little bit nicer. All this tansy is growing up and eventually we're gonna have to take care of that. But the second reason was we found this wild rose bush and it started to bloom. So I wanted to open it up and let it get a lot more sunlight. And then I wanted to knock this side down so like it was visible for people like when they're coming up the driveway for us to see it and everything. And it's a really cool rose bush. I think it's totally wild. I don't know if you guys know what kind it is. You should drop a comment down below. But there's lots of bees on it, so it's obviously feeding the bees. It looks beautiful. It looks healthy. We got new sprouts coming up off of it and new growth coming up out of the ground. So it looks like it's doing pretty well. We're going to try to get some more sun for it and keep some water on it. So hopefully it does well.
All right, so keeping it rolling on planting stuff. We have some marigolds, I believe. I bought these on Amazon. I'll drop a link in the description below. Um, just put them in some paper towels and they sprouted about two days, which was pretty quick, I thought. I put a bunch in there um, and I still have a bunch left over. So that's cool. Hope you guys can hear me. It's quite windy out here in Idaho. But uh, anyway, so we are gonna put these in the ground here. I'm kind of breaking up all the dirt and trying to loosen it up a little bit. I've kind of found that if you just stab at it a little bit and break it up, that seems to work pretty good. Hopefully they keep growing. We're gonna hit them with some water right away and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, this is what we got going here. Just little paper towel action, pretty wet, um, soaked inside a gallon bag. And I'll show you these here. They sprouted pretty good. All right, so you can see we already got one growing right there. Water dripping off, so this is pretty wet. We've struggled with these seeds. I'm gonna try to not drop these here. But you can see a lot of them have tails coming out. There's some leaves. Wow, there's green in there already. So yeah, we're gonna get these in the dirt here. It's like the perfect little hole for you. All right guys, so as you can see, starting some more seeds. We've got cucumbers, cucumbers, spinach, some more of these marigolds. And right at the end outside there, I started planting the paper towel just in the dirt because a lot of these little roots started to grow into the paper towel. So I figured, hell, I'm just gonna plant the whole paper towel. It's gonna hold a little bit of extra moisture in the dirt with it. So it should just dissipate as well right at the end of the season or by the end of the season. It should just compost down. Hopefully it works out. So on this one, I've lined them up into lines and that gives me an area to rip it. You know, once this thing's all wet, it was really easy to rip it apart outside there. So I'm just gonna stack it up. All I'm doing is ripping out, oh, it's two of these folds. So about that much of paper towel, fold it in half. And start your next layer. I've never tried this before. So you guys are finding out right along with me. I'll put her in the bag here. I'm gonna fold it in half. Doesn't fit as good as the last one. I think that'll be just fine. <laughs> 